Hi everyone, it's Steffi and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be doing our makeup trial for the Adore box, which is the February box. So I have everything right here. I have the card. We're just going to go through everything again before we start. And then when I'm done, I'll let you know what I think of the products and we will review them. So here's our box, the Adore card. I don't remember what the first item is. I'm still... Here's the, the variation is usually in the corner. I'm not sure if you can see it right here near my finger. It's variation number 11. Usually they put it directly in the corner. That's why I couldn't find it. So first is the Kate Somerville KX Active Concentrates Biomimicking Peptide Serum. The MSRP for this is $98. What I will say about this is I do like the way it made my skin look. As you can see, I don't have as much redness anymore on my face. Um, I'm going to continue using this. I really like this. It hasn't broke up my face. None of these products broke up my face, which is very good because my skin is sensitive. So that I'm going to continue using. Next, we have the Lexi Beauty Complete Sponge Set. I'm excited to use this and show this to you guys. So... Sorry, that was my son. He likes to interrupt me on camera sometimes. So in here we have our detail blender. I believe this one is the powder blender and this one is the precision blender. So we're going to get full use out of those. Um, those retail for $40. <clears throat> then we have the First Day Beauty Facial Radiance Pads. These retail for $16. These are a nice toner for the skin. They are gentle on the skin, and I don't feel like they're very drying. So that's what I have to say about those. The reason why I'm telling you about the skincare first is because we always put skincare on before our makeup. So that's why I decided to do that. Then last we have, oh, I skipped the tanning drops. Isle of Paradise Self Tanning Drops right here. So what I will say about these is you have to... <clears throat> Every time you use them, mix them with your lotion. You have to put your lotion in your hand and then squirt the drops into your hand, rub it together, and then put it on. What I had tried to do was put it in a bottle with lotion and use it, and that didn't really do anything. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would say you definitely have to put the lotion in your hand and then put the drops in your hand. It can be a messy process, but that's what I would say you have to do. These retail for $29, so I will get into that whole thing later, but so far I like the scent of these. It's very easy to use. Then last we have our lip, the Queen Matte Liquid Lip Stain in Monroe. This retails for $17. So our whole look today will be based off of this lip color, and I am hoping that I can put together something for you guys that looks nice. But I am a makeup beginner, so we're going to try. We're actually going to try cutting the crease today. So let's get right into it and get going with this makeup. All I have on right now is my moisturizer and my eye cream. So let's go get started. Okay, so we are back, and this is the finished look. I am very happy with it. It's very different, but... As for my first time cutting the crease, I think it actually went really well. I do love a good red lip, and I feel like this did well. It is very dry, though. I feel like you do need a gloss over the top of this in order for it to really perform better. Like, I don't mind a matte, but I would like a gloss. So let me go find my lip gloss, and we're going to put that over top and see what that looks like. Okay, so here we are back with the lip gloss on. I feel like that looks a lot better. I am so happy with this eye look. Look at this. Oh my God, it's so pretty. I feel like this this will be the thumbnail of the video because I just, I'm in love with it. So let's start out with some of the, with the skincare products and then we'll get into what I thought of what we were able to actually use in our makeup trial. So. Miss Kate Somerville, do I like this serum? Yes. Um, I have only been using it for a week, but I will say it is doing very well, performing like it is supposed to be. My skin 
you know, I don't have a lot of saggy skin or anything like that, so I can't say anything about it tightening my skin or whatever. Um, but it does smooth out my skin. I'm going to give this a four just because it's very expensive, but you do get a lot of bang for your buck because you're only using two drops out of here. And this is 30 milliliters. So this is a pretty big bottle and it will last you a long time. The next, what did we have on our card? Where is my card? Okay. Here we go. Next on the card is, well, I was going to talk about the skin here first. So let's just do that. The self tanning drops. What I will say is, as you can see, I have used quite a bit of these over a week. Um, 12 drops for, now mind you, I'm only doing one leg is quite a bit. Does it work? Yes. As with any self tanning product, you need to be careful around your knees, your toes, your ankles, any areas like that. You should be applying some type of powder to them, whether it's baby powder or you want to use a setting powder. You should be applying something to them, especially like the crease where your knee is, um, where it bends, just so that you don't get like any extra orange product on there. And you should also exfoliate before you're using any self tanning items. I do really like this when I buy it again. I don't know yet. Um, just because I'm thinking if I was using this for my whole body, I probably would have gone through half of this already. And for a week, I don't really know if um, $29 is a good deal. Or if, if they had a bigger bottle, I would probably buy that. So I'm going to give this a three because I am neutral on it. It did what it's supposed to do. It does smell nice. I love the idea of this, but I'm just on the fence about this right now. And I kind of need a while to make up my mind on if I'm going to buy it or not. So then next we have the first aid beauty facial radiance pads. So these are again, $16. What I will say is this is a good toner for your face but I can get something a lot cheaper at Walmart and I feel like that's pretty much the same thing. So I am not going to buy these again. I'm gonna give these a four because they did not damage my skin or anything like that. Uh, they are doing their job. I don't have anything to complain about with them. I just haven't had a toner in my routine. So now I am going to, after I'm done with these, incorporate one, but you know, that's just the tea on that. I mean, I don't really have anything else to say about it. I just feel like $16 is too expensive for how many come in here? 28 pads. You know, that's like paying 50 cents a pad. I feel like it's kind of expensive. All right, so now let's talk about, because I went through all three of those. Yes, okay, I wanted to make sure I didn't leave anything out. Let's talk about these sponges for a second. These sponges are very hard. Um, this is the powder one. As you can see, the powder stayed on the sponge and it doesn't really blend off. So as for using it for powder, I wouldn't recommend. I'm sure this would be good for carving out your contour. I did see somebody else do that in one of their try-ons. Um, you know, and as for blending out foundation and using it for the under eyes for concealer it did work very well i just will not be using these for powder they are very beautiful blush brushes i like this little um box that they came in Oops. video screwed up again sorry about that i'm probably going to keep this little box just because it's a nice organizer for them and in my makeup drawer it would help keep things nicer my son actually took the um top half of this and he was playing with it so I don't even have that all I have is this um, but that's fine you know and then we're talking about the queen lip stain I love a lip stain if you get up close you can see it hasn't bled this one didn't bleed I did not use a lip liner with this the applicator, let's look at, is very precise. Um, you know, and I've, I mean, I've been applying these for years, so maybe that's why I don't need a lip liner, but I feel like you do need some type of gloss with it unless you're going for a very mattified look. But when I did the swatch with this on my hand and had it on my hand for a couple of hours, I noticed it was kind of drying. So I would say definitely either keep a lip balm with you or a lip gloss with you just so that you can go ahead 
and make sure your lips don't get too dry because I feel like this will do that. I'm actually going, and this is $17, which is expensive, but there is a lot of product in here. So I do like this. I wouldn't buy this in this shade, but if, it, if there was more of a berry or a purple shade, I definitely would buy it. So that's something I might be thinking about in the future. I am going to give this a five because I do love a lip stain. I really do. So now we're going to see if this is transfer resistant. A little bit of transfer, but that's okay. I mean, most of that is from the lip gloss, but you know, like I said, I really do like this product. So what do I think overall of the box? I love this month's box. I like the skincare that's in here. You know, like I said, the main reason why I signed up for BoxyCharm is because I wanted to get better at doing my makeup, which hello, we cut the crease today. I'm very proud of myself. Um, and the lips are on point. And also, I wanted some more skincare options because, honestly, I don't know what direction to go with skincare. I don't know what moisturizer to buy. Right now, I'm using Pond's Cream, for Christ's sakes. I mean, hello, help a girl out. So, honestly, very happy with this month's box. Overall rating, I'm going to give the box, I'm going to say a five. Very good job, BoxyCharm. You spoiled me this Valentine's Day. The box actually did come a day before Valentine's Day, so I feel like that was a good sign. Overall value of this box, again, is $200. I am very happy with it. I'm, And for next month, for March, the choice product I chose was the Murad Eye Cream. Currently, as you guys know, I have shown you my eye cream, and it is not the greatest, so I'm very excited for an eye cream to wear which you're supposed to wear in the morning because it works for eight hours so i'm very excited for that but anyway that was our whole box adore i did adore it i do like it so if you guys enjoyed the video go ahead and leave it a like if you are new please subscribe and i am going to now insert the rest of the clips for the skincare after this but then that will be the end of the video. So after that, the video will be done. Okay, so we are ready to get started. I have put primer on my face already. So I didn't really see a point in doing that on camera. So for foundation, I have the e.l.f. Flawless Satin Foundation and this is in the shade Natural. I usually use about three pumps of this. So I'm gonna put that on my hand. And then what I like to do is I like to blend, take some on my face, and then I use a sponge to blend it in. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna be using this sponge right here, this one with the wedge on the bottom to do that. So that's what we're gonna do first. And we'll see how that blends in. A lot of people like to dampen their sponges. I don't. Um, it's just personal preference, I guess. To me, it's applying like any other sponge would. But I will show you a close-up after I have it all the way on. And with this foundation, it does kind of have a perfumey scent. So if your skin is sensitive to perfume, I would not recommend using this brand from e.l.f. Or variation, whatever you want to say. But this sponge is a little bit hard. I don't know if that's just because it's brand new. I haven't had a new sponge in a while. So that could be it. And on my nose, I do my nose kind of different where I just kind of move the product around on my face. And then I tap it on. It's not working very well for the nose, I'll say that. But the rest of the face, it's going on pretty smooth. But what I want to see is now, because when I usually do my neck, yeah, it soaked it all up. Usually when I do my neck, 
I use what's on the sponge and I just kind of push and then I grab that extra product. There isn't really a lot though because the sponge has soaked it up. So these sponges are definitely more absorbent than the Real Technique sponge that I have. So I'm just going to go through and kind of fix any areas that need fixing. All right, so that is done. Here is what the sponge looks like now. You can't really tell because it is dark. So I'm just going to put that back in its little box. But that is my foundation. As you can see on the nose, we've got a little bit of an issue going on here. I'm not sure what really happened, but it kind of blended. You can see right here. I don't really understand, um, but we're going to use concealer anyway, so we should be okay. So that is our next step, and I'm excited to use this little detail blender. So for concealer, I have the L'Oreal Paris True Match Super Blendable Concealer, and this is in the shade Pale. I will say I don't like this concealer. I am switching over to the e.l.f. one once this is gone. As you can see, it is a little bit dark for my complexion, so I did pick up the e.l.f. Camo Concealer in a lighter shade because I don't really feel like this is doing much for when I do my contour and I do all my blending. I mean, it does help like today with keeping foundation where it's supposed to be, so I will say that. I know, it doesn't look very pretty right now, but we will get there. So, now we're going to take our little teeny tiny sponge here. This is so cute. And we're just going to go in under the eye and blend that in. And I will say that is blending very nicely. There we go again. Dropping you guys. Sorry about that. I just have to be careful when I set my phone down. What I really need is a phone stand for in here because I always seem to drop my phone and then I feel bad because that's annoying to watch me fixing my phone all the time. So, yeah, these sponges are really, really hard. I'm just going to take the back of this and try to kind of buff out around where my nose and my eyebrows connect just because I really want that to blend in. But... I will say, so here's a sponge, here's what we have for the blended areas. I think it did a good job. So now, what is my next step? My next step is powder. So usually I use this big fluffy brush for my powder even when I set my under eyes. But we're going to use this today. So I have never used a sponge to set my face. So this is going to be different. Um, but we're going to give it a try. So I'm not really sure how we do this. Is that too much? I don't know. There we go again. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about using a sponge to set my face. It's working, but is it working well? You tell me what you think. I don't think so. But I'm trying to be a trooper through this. I mean, you can just see that it's not... They said this was a powder blender. Maybe if I would have wetted it, it would have worked better, but then I feel like all the powder would have just stuck to it. So I don't really think that would have helped either. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use this all over like I just did. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take my fluffy brush and we're going to buff that out because I have way too much powder on my face and I don't like that. I don't need to be walking around looking like Casper, you know. Like I said, those sponges are very hard. I feel like they would take some getting used to, but then again, maybe that's why they were in the box. So, 
Let me see. Next, we're going to do the eyes. <clears throat> Before we do start the eyes, I did pick up two new products yesterday. First is the e.l.f. Shadow Lock Eyelid Primer. So I picked that up, and that was, I believe, about 3 or $4 at Walmart. And then I have the e.l.f. Clear Brow and Lash Mascara. Um, okay, it does tell you on the back what's what. But this was $2. I wanted to pick this up because I don't have an eyelash primer. And I just feel like for my brows, I wanted a gel to go on top of after I'm done shading them in. So I wanted to try these both out because if we're going to be cutting the crease, I'm going to need something to prime my lids and cut my crease. So I'm going to go ahead and unbox both of these and then we'll get started. And I'll show you what colors we're going to do for the eyes. Okay, so I have the eyelid primer out of the box. This is not what I expected it to be. It's pretty much the same as you would use for concealer. You know, it's just a little brush. So let's go ahead and put this on. And it says to kind of tap it in with your finger also. I've never used an eyeshadow primer before. I have no idea what to expect with this. I did also just get it in my lash line, so that's lovely for me. We love that. Let's see if I can get it out of my lash line. So I'm not sure if you can see, but that's what that looks like. It does look a little different. Let's do the other eye. So this is what I am going to use to cut my crease today. Um, when we cut the crease, I am going to be doing like a Manny Mua, Manny MUA, I always forget how he cuts his creases where he does it like halfway through the, through the lid versus like on top of the whole lid. And I really like how he does that. So <clears throat> that's what we're going to do. I'm going to stick that up here and then I'm going to show you what I want to do. So we have the Profusion Mattes um, palette right here. We are going to use the shades Bravo and Bouncy. And then in the Ace Beauté Vintage Dawn palette. We are going to use this this shade right here, this Serengeti, which is a glitter. So that's what I'm going to use in the crease. So we're going to see how this actually turns out. So what I want to do <clears throat> is I want to start with this bouncy shade, which is more of a tan shade. So I'm going to take a big fluffy brush for this because this is kind of like our transitional color in between. And I'm going to pop that right in the crease just to add some color to our lid you know it's not really that dark which is what I want and I do want to blend that kind of up near the brow bone just so it's blended in it's not really that dark of a color as you can see but that's what I want Again, haven't did any dramatic eye looks lately. I used to do them all the time, years ago, before I had kids. All the time. Lots of smoky eyes, lots of uh, silver metallic colors. Real pretty. I wish I had some pictures to show you, but this is like back in the MySpace days. Where um, people didn't really, you know, I don't even know my, know my MySpace password. So... This is what we have so far. So now I'm just going to take my finger, I know you guys hate me for this, sorry, and blend in the top of this so we have some transition. <clears throat> Alright, so next, where are my other powder, my other eyeliner brushes that I want? Okay, so this is, is this the one that I used the shimmer with? Yes, it is. That's not the one I want. I want this one. So I haven't washed my brushes, so they're kind of dirty. This has orange on it from yesterday. So I'm just going to kind of brush it on my hand to get that orange off. 
because I don't want any orange mixing with this color. Although it's not really going to matter for this one. It's for the other one I'm more worried about. But I do have baby wipes if I need them. So we'll see. I just am trying to buff out some of this orange because there is a lot on here. <laughs> As you can see all right so now we're gonna go in with Bravo and that's that darker brown color mind you this palette does have a lot of fallout I will tell you that so I will be brushing the fallout off after so now we're gonna pat that into the corner of the eye and we're just gonna kind of do that halfway through go in above the crease a little bit just to kind of blend and now I have to get closer to the mirror because I can't see. Yes, that looks good. Lots of fallout with this one. Lots. So, that is what we have so far with our fallout. Mind you, we're not there yet. We're in transition, so don't judge me on my eye look yet because we're not done. So again, on the other side, I'm just going to pat that in. Pat it in a little bit more towards the middle of the eyelash. Then going kind of in like a V above the crease halfway. We're not going all the way through the crease. Just halfway because I just want this corner. Now, <clears throat> that side actually looks darker than the other side. As you can see here. So I'm going to go back and do the other side. A little bit darker. Didn't realize I had that much on my brush. But you know what? This is a dramatic eye look, so that's actually okay. Can I get a little bit more on top, please? Okay. The fallout is real. Holy camoli. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and clean that up real quick, just because I need to. I mean, I'm not going anywhere today, so I really don't care. But what I should have did, because we have this mess going on, is I should have, <clears throat> before I started my foundation, put this on. But what we can do is we can go ahead with some concealer and fix that. So when we're all done with the eye look, I will go back and fix that so it doesn't look so dramatically awkward. I'm going to let you guys see up close what the eyes look like so far. But this is what I'm talking about. It's a mess. It's a mess. I would not recommend buying the Profusions Mattes palette. But we're going to use it today because that's what we have. So next I have to find my little metallic brush that I use. Um, I'm just going to, I think, take a baby wipe and kind of clean this up because it has a lot of orange on here. And I don't want that orange pigment in my eye. And we also have to cut the crease. So I want to do that and just let that dry a little bit. Even though I am going to be wetting my brush, I guess it really doesn't matter. But I do want to get some of this color out of here. So that should help. Just a little tip in case you didn't know that. Yeah, you can use a baby wipe to clean out your makeup brushes for in between. Now, mine is a little bit stained. I'm not sure if you guys realize this, but sometimes when you get a lot of blues or pinky colors, they do stain your brush. So my brush is a little bit stained. I'm going to set that down. And I'm also going to get this eyeshadow off my hand. And that wipe is kind of good to keep around just for cleaning things up. Okay, so now we need to go through and cut our crease. So I'm a little bit nervous. Because I've never did this before. So if this doesn't look perfect, bear with me. Mind you, I am not going anywhere today. So if this doesn't look good, I'm not mad at it. But I am learning. <clears throat> so we're going to take our e.l.f. eyelid primer. And here we go. So we're going to start in the corner of the eye. And we're going to brush that to like the middle of the eye. And with this, I'm noticing you have to use more than you would with a concealer. And it says to just go on with your finger 
kind of pat that on, which we will do, and let it dry. So now let's do the other one. Now I didn't really put a lot of pigment on the areas where I'm going to be cutting my crease anyway. Um, not like it really matters because with this, and I can see the applicator is already getting dirty from the eyeshadow, it doesn't matter because I'm not using this as a concealer afterwards. I'm just using this for the sole purpose of cutting the crease. And I've got some in my waterline. We love that. And in my lash line. We love that too. Okay, so that's where we're at right now. <clears throat> Time to put our shimmer on. So what I like to do, and actually, hold on, I have to move something here. I'm using my makeup products to help my phone stand up. I'm really something. So I have the Elf Magic, um, Matte Magic Mist and Set Spray. So that's what I have been using lately. I know I use a lot of Elf products, but honestly, you can get them at Walmart and they're pretty cheap. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just wetting my brush by spraying some setting spray on it. Because I've noticed with these shimmers, they do show up better when you do that. And then I'm going to go into the jet. And then I'm going to go into this shade Serengeti right here. And we're just going to swirl that around on there. <clears throat> and I'm going to pick up quite a bit. Alright, time to put it on the eye. Let's see how this goes. cold we're gonna have to blend this I can already tell you that but it is going on nicely we might have to go back with our brown afterwards So when the brown and the yellow mix together, they do make a real pretty color. So I like that. And I am pulling from the corner of my eye outwards just to kind of give it a little bit more dimension. You probably can't see it right now very well with this lighting, but we'll fix that. So now what I have to do <clears throat> And I'm just going to use my finger to kind of buff off the majority of this. Is we have to go back in with that brown, which I don't want to do because this is just turning into a mess. And we have to kind of fix where we laid our product before. So I'm just going to go in right in the middle of the crease. And I'm just going to lay some eyeshadow on top and then I'm going to use my finger to blend that just so we have a nice like middle line. Again, I haven't did any looks like this in a while so don't be surprised if it's not perfect. And I'm just going to take my finger and blend that a little bit because we want it to transition. And we want it to look nice. We don't want it to look like just yellow and then brown. All right, so I'm thinking up top. Looks like we need some white, and I don't have any more shadow brushes to use, so I'm gonna use my finger. I'm gonna go in with this top shade right here, Sugar. This is my go-to shade. Um, and actually, that looks too light, so I'm probably gonna pick this tan shade, top notch. So I'm just gonna put that on my finger. And we're going to go in above on the brow bone. Just kind of plop that on there. Just to kind of transition. So there is a little bit of a difference. It just kind of makes it look a little bit better than my skin. So... Let me see, what do I think? Let's give you guys a close up so you can see. I mean, it looks real pretty aside from our big mess from this fallout. This fallout is crazy today. Yeah, I goofed. 
I goofed. So I'm going to go fix my goof right now and kind of maybe do a little bit more with this brown. So give me a minute. I'll be right back. All right. So after some work, I've went ahead and I have cleaned that up so it looks a lot better. I have also added some highlighter to the top of my brow bone, which I'm just going to buff in lightly. So that is the eye look. I think it looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. First time cutting the crease, you know. So now I'm going to go ahead and um, because we don't really have anything else for the face, I'm going to go ahead and just do the rest of my face and then um, I'll show you guys the finished look when we're done. Okay, so here is the look that we have so far. I think it is very pretty. So now we're going to put the lip on and see how this pairs. I'm hoping this will pair well because I did work really hard on this. I know my eyeliner is not perfect, but like I said, I'm not going anywhere today, so I don't really mind. Um, so let's put this lip on and see what it looks like. Now when I swatched it on my hand, I noticed that when it dried, it did feel like paint. Now, and also another thing is when I do my lip first thing in the morning, I do need to move my lip ring around. So I'm going to turn and do that so you don't have to see it because sometimes it weirds people out. Um, but this is a corkscrew piercing, which means that it has a spiral to it. So some people think it's weird when I move it around so I can actually get to my lip. So now you can see I have that moved so we can get to the whole lip. So I'm not going to go in with a lip liner, dangerous I know, but I don't have one and I don't feel like using my eyebrow liner because that's just weird. Don't mind my kids in the background, they're talking about something, I'm not sure exactly what. This is actually very precise, so I'm happy with that. So well, now we're coming together, oh yeah. All right, so there we go. The lip is on. Wow, did that come together good. So now we got to love the lipstick on the teeth, right? Is that not going to come off? I'm going to have to brush my teeth again. Oh my God. All right, well, let's go sit down and talk about what I thought of all these products. Now I have taken my shower and we are ready to do the nighttime skincare routine um, for the first time with our serum and facial pads. I already put the um, self tanning drops into some lotion. Um, so I put it in this lotion bottle right here. This is just Jergens body butter and lavender scent. So then I took the tanning oil drops and I dropped 12 drops in there and this is halfway full so we'll see how that works. I'm not sure if it's 12 drops per application or per the amount of lotion you're using. I'm not really sure. We'll see how well this works but I did use all 12. So now we're going to start putting some of the, using some of this stuff on the face. So let's see if I can get my phone to cooperate here with me because you guys know it never does in here. It might actually stay this time. So we have the First Aid Beauty Facial Radiance Pads. So we're going to use one of those. Like I said before, these are very moisturized and they're actually really, really thin. Like, is this one or two? No, this is one. That's how thin it is. So we're going to use that all over the face and I'm guessing this is like a toner for your face. And I do have redness so anything to help that out is a big hit for me. 
but since I've already cleansed my face, this might be too much and it might be drying. Yeah, so that's that. I mean, it does have this scrubby side, so you know what side to use. And then the other side just doesn't have, it looks the same on camera, but this side, as you can see right there, has little bumpies on it to exfoliate your face. So that's on. Then next I'm just going to go in with a facial mist just because I use a facial mist every night. This is the Olay Mist Ultimate Hydration Essence Calming Aloe Leaf and Camel Chamomile Extract. So, and as you can see, I've used this a lot. I use it every night. And I do use quite a bit of it. So next I'm going to put on the lapis oil like I did mention in the unboxing video. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that on. I want to see if I can use these two serums together. I'm not sure if I can. So that just goes right here under the eyes. I give it a second to kind of absorb in. And then we just go like this. And I always do it right here too. I'm in a close up on my face again so you can see what I'm talking about about that blue undertone that I have. It's hard to there there you can see it. This right here. And it's so dark, but it's gotten better. Like if I hold my phone out here, you can just barely see it. I still know it's there, but it's gotten so much better since I started using that lapis oil. Now, I believe it does say, stay. <laughs> I believe it does say with this Kate Somerville one, layer with serum or moisturizer. So what we're going to do is we're gonna just put this with some moisturizer and I have the Pond's Nourishing Cream Moisturizer. I know it's very cheap, like I said. Don't really have a lot of skincare stuff. I just, so BoxyCharm is good for me because they do offer that. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in my palm right here. And then we're going to take Miss Kate Somerville, and I want to make sure I've got, oh, I've got enough in here. Okay, now I'm not sure if you could see it on camera very well, but I'm just going to show you right here. This is the color of it, this tan color. So now I'm going to drop it into my hand. So that's two drops, and I'm just going to mix this together before I put it on my face. That's what I'm doing right now. Doesn't really have a smell. It's warm, probably from my hands, but we'll rub that in and see what we think. Because the Pond's cream absorbs really nicely. It is a little bit of a heavier cream, so it's going to be greasy. So, yes, I do look a little bit greasy right now. It's actually really hard to close this. There we go. All right, so I will check in in the morning, and we will see what we're looking like so far. And after a week, I will check in again, and we'll see if the face looks any different than right now. Mainly this redness like right here and here and these couple little breakouts that I have and my acne scars. That's mainly what I'm looking to fix. So if it's just a serum that just kind of makes your skin feel dewy, that's not really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something to take care of all of this that I have going on. So we'll see what happens. I'll keep you guys updated. Good morning. Well, I will say one thing I have noticed is the redness in my face is gone. Um, 
you know, it's really reduced a lot, and especially around the nose. So maybe this will work out for me, but I'm going to go have my coffee now. Okay, so it has been a week, and I am back here to show you guys what my face looks like after a week of using the, what are these called again? Facial Radiance Pads. Kate Somerville Serum and Isle of Paradise Tanning Drops. So I do notice there is a little bit less redness in my face and that my acne scars have gone down a little bit. I do have a new pimple right here, but that just popped up today. Aside from that, I haven't had any acne breakouts or anything like that at all since I've been using these products. I think these facial radiance pads for how much were these? 16 I think is that right for the facial radiance pads? I think that's actually pretty good. Um, I can't complain. I do need to add a toner into my routine because it really did help. As for the Kate Somerville serum, as like with any serum, you should invest in it because if it is inexpensive, it is probably cheaply made. And with this one, it's only two drops. So really you're getting a lot of bang for your buck here with this serum. So I would recommend it. I do like using it. So I'm going to keep using it. Would I invest in it? Probably. The facial radiance pads, I think I can get a cheaper toner at Walmart, so I'm not really sure if there's that much of a difference in toner, but I will use these because they are convenient. And then the Isle of Paradise Tanning Drops, these are $29 for this bottle right here. Um, and this is how much I have used in a week. So that's only on one leg, mind you. If you use this on your whole body, the bottle would probably be gone by now. So I'm going to show you what the legs look like um, right now. So I'm not sure if you can see because I can't see. So I'm going to try. So here is the leg that I used the tanning oil on. And this is the leg that I did not. So as you can see, there is some difference there. Definitely difference in a week. Um, what I will say is there are areas that obviously the tanning oil has bunched up. I didn't use any powder at all because I kind of just wanted to go through and do this. Um, <clears throat> so that's that. If by chance the video doesn't turn out good, I'm just going to have to insert an image to show you guys what that looks like because obviously I can't see on my phone without a mirror and my mirror is too tall for me to see to compare. But off camera, the difference is pretty drastic. And mind you, I don't have breakouts on my knees. I do have psoriasis, so that's what that is. But overall, what do I think of the products? The Isle of Paradise Tanning Drops. I really think it's inconvenient to use these. The way I have been using them is putting a quarter size amount of lotion on my hand and then squeezing the 12 drops also onto my hand and mixing that together because it does say here, must be mixed with moisturizer. So to do this on your whole body over and over again, this gets very slippery and it's very hard to hold on to and it is glass. So it's not as convenient as I would say just using a regular cream with moisture, with, um, not moisturizer, with um, self-tanner in it. I mean, I, I like the idea that you can use as little or as l much as you want. I get it, but do I really think that I would use it again? No, I don't. So that's the only thing I would really say. I'm going to use up the facial radiance pads because I have them. I'm not going to buy those again. But when this Kate Somerville serum runs out, unless I do end up getting a new serum from BoxyCharm, I'm probably going to keep using it just because. And this has a shelf life of 12 months, so it does last a very long time. But that's what I have to say about that. Back to the rest of the video.